I describe type 2 diabetes like this. Every cell in your body has two receptors. Every carbohydrate that you eat turns into glucose. Every cell eats glucose when glucose binds to a receptor at the same time that insulin binds to the second receptor. When those two receptors are activated simultaneously, the cell pulls those in, uses the glucose as fuel, and releases the insulin to be recycled. Because we eat such complex carbohydrate diets with refined sugars and white flour and so on, the cell doesn't have a choice. Glucose, insulin, glucose, insulin, glucose, insulin, glucose, insulin, glucose, until the cell is literally overwhelmed with glucose. As a means of self-defense, the cell hides the insulin receptor. And this is an example of how we naturopaths see the development of symptoms of high blood sugar as not necessarily dysfunctional, although clearly it has clinical implications, but rather the cell is trying to defend itself. It's a good thing that the cell has a wisdom. So now the cell has keeps releasing the glucose. It never takes the glucose in, and glucose begins to build up in the blood. That's when your blood sugar level is starting to rise. You know, most of the uh, time, this process goes on for a long time before patients actually develop illness that they can feel. But the body doesn't like to have a lot of sugar building up in the blood, so it has a couple of compensatory mechanisms. It sort of makes you thirsty, and you try to urinate out some of the sugar. That doesn't really work that well. But the second mechanism is um, it calls upon the red blood cells. Now, the red blood cells are disc-shaped cells, which are highly specific in their function. Their only purpose, really, is to carry the gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen jumps on, the red blood cell carries it someplace, oxygen jumps off, there's no binding. Carbon dioxide jumps on, goes to the lung, carbon dioxide jumps off where we breathe it out. It's easy. When blood sugar starts to rise, the body calls upon the red blood cells and says, listen, we've got a problem. You've got to load sugar onto these four points instead of some of the gases. The uh, red blood cell puts the glucose molecule on, but the affinity between the iron and the sugar is so strong that the sugar will never leave that red blood cell for the rest of its life. By, and we know that red blood cells live about four months. So by measuring what percentage of red blood cells have been commandeered into carrying sugar instead of oxygen, we can get a much better, much more accurate sense of the patient's blood sugar level over the past four months. That's why we naturopathic doctors generally use hemoglobin A1C as the initial sort of screening question we ask. What's really true about blood sugar? Early on in the disease, it's possible for patients to fast for 12 hours, you know, because we're drawing their cholesterol levels anyway. And they can artificially drive down their sugar to a normal level by fasting so hard but the hemoglobin A1C unmasks all of that. And we see that in the normal day-to-day -day life, blood sugar has probably been higher. Now, you can only do that test about every four months. You wait for these red blood cells to die off and see how many of the new crop of red blood cells were drafted into the service of carrying glucose. And when that moves down into a normal range, you feel reassured that your client's metabolic processes have started to change.